Welcome. My name is George Pearson and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video though is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this special Photoshop effects project, we'll be doing this kind of a fantasy picture in here. Now, most of this is pretty straightforward. There's only one real trick on this one unusual trick, and that's to create these star-like images in here. We'll be getting to that in just a little bit. Let's look at our, our basic layout. We have our background photo down below here. There's a gradient layer above that, black to clear, which gives us a darker sky. We then have a gradient fill layer, which gives us our coloration, our kind of magical coloration happening in there. Then we have this layer here. This has our star effects on it. And we'll be coming back to that in just a little bit. Notice we're actually using just a normal blend layer on that, so the real effect is just these star shapes. Above that, we have our eagle or hawk in here. Again, pretty straightforward. It's just a picture of a hawk which has been rotated. And we have a standard layer mask on that to allow us to work with that hawk. So there we go. Let's take a look at this now and we'll begin to work on this picture. We're starting off with our bird of prey here. This is a public domain image and I have a link for this one along with a link to the forest in the materials section so you can take a look at that link and download these same images if you, if you want to work along with this exact same project. So those are both public domain and downloadable from, the, from online on the web. Let's start by setting up our new file. I'm going to be using this as our base file since that's our background. So we're going to take the bird image. I'm going to float the bird image. Just pull it down. So I'm floating this layer. I'll pull the background over here. We can then get rid of that. So here's the bird sitting on top of our background layer. I want to resize this, making quite a bit larger. You can see here it's you know pretty good size. It's about half, a little more than half the overall width of our image. So I want to bring our bird image up and give it a little rotation. So it looks a little more interesting. So edit transform scale. Hold the shift key down so that you scale it proportionally. And I'll make them about, about that big. That's pretty good. And then let's rotate this image. Edit transform rotate. Just come outside and just find a nice a nice angle. Something around in here should do pretty well for us. There we go. It may not be as exact, you know, exactly the same as our sample here, but it's about what I want. Maybe the bird's a little bit larger, and that's fine. Okay, now we need to come in and create our mask around this. So we have just the bird showing and nothing else. And we'll do that. You can use any technique you want to on this one. It's a pretty good image in here, as you can see. And a lot of our standard techniques will actually work very, very well on this. The problem areas are going to be the feathers around here because especially right down here they get to be the, the same value as the background. So you could start by doing a magic wand style approach and then clean that up after you have the basic selection. So I'll go ahead and we'll try that. Let's just back up a little bit here. So it's a pretty good size in our window. There we go. Okay, magic wand. Let's start over here with kind of a blue. That gets most of that. You click into our white area here, and that's almost almost the rest. I have my magic wand here set at a tolerance of 30. It's not set at contiguous. So I have to you know click it a couple of times to do that. Let's now move in. I'm going to switch over here to the polygonal lasso tool. And we'll use either the add or subtract to clean up 
this selection. You can see here we have a couple of spots in here. There's some spots. Here's a spot. I want to add those to my selection. So let's click on Add. And then I can just do a big selection just kind of around those like that back at the beginning point. Double click and that adds that into the selection. Or we can delete that from our selection. Should I keep in mind that the selection is actually the outside area. So there we go. We just removed that. It's a little bit right here. You can see that. I'll just do the same thing. Just do kind of a shape around that. Back to my beginning. Gets rid of that. There's a little, little one right there. Same thing. I'm just going to do a little shape around that. I'm just removing those from our selection. Okay, let's take a look at the edge now. And as I mentioned, you know, the bird feathers are giving us some problems. Now the selection is out here. So if we remove from our selection, it will then do what we want. We want to remove anything on our feathers and keep the outside as our selection area for the moment. So let's zoom in on these. Little soft edges there, that doesn't really matter. We don't, I'm not going to be worrying about that for this particular image. So I want to remove in here I'm going to start in like that so I can see my beginning position. I'm just going to come around and do the edge of this feather, kind of redo that myself. And just come around until I have a good spot over here and then back and finish that and that gets rid of those. Scrolling up here, same thing. I'm just going to start inside so I can see where I'm beginning and I'll come around and redo the edge of this feather and back inside, back to the beginning again. Again, removing that. Scroll down and continue on with our feather adjustment here. And just working around and kind of cleaning up and repairing the ends of our feathers. There we go. This one needs a little bit more work as you can see here. I'm going to start way off outside there. And just redo that feather shape completely. And same thing, just work around back to our starting position, which is along here somewhere. There it is. And our next feather. The rest of the bird should be pretty good. It shouldn't really need anything. It's really going to be just these edges, but we'll take a look at all the edges anyway, just to make sure that we're okay. And again, I'm just making just a fast selection here, back to the beginning. There we go, that's good. Over here, get this feather. So you can see if you have the right picture with, it, with the right background, if there's good separation, you can actually can use that magic wand to make most of your selection for you. I tend to stay away from the magic wand because it frequently just does not work. But in this case, it, it works out pretty well aside from these feathered edges. More often than not, I'll just use this polygonal tool and just do the whole selection by hand. But we can save a lot of time in this particular instance. Okay, come back in, back to the beginning. There it is. And a couple of feathers to go. And we'll be done with this. Step look, we'll of course, check the wrist of the bird, make sure that everything else is fine, but I think we'll be okay. We're, we'll be adding a glow around the bird, so that's going to hide any little bit of sky showing on that end that's not going to be a an issue with this particular picture. You need to also keep that in mind, you know, what what does your picture look like? What's your final output going to be looking like? And that can determine exactly how careful you have to be. Sometimes the outlook, you know, if you're not actually perfect, it may not matter because of the final effect that you're doing. That's the case here with this with this bird. The final effect will will hide any little haloing that we might be getting around that edge. So that's not going to be an issue. Okay, just coming around to our final feathers in here. There we go, back to our beginning. That looks good. Scroll up. I think that one's okay. I think I'll just leave that one as is. Let's now just 
switch over to the standard move tool, hold the shift key down, and then I can pull the picture around like that. And I'll just quickly check the rest of these feathers, make sure they're looking looking good, good selections on those. So far so good, not seeing any problems anywhere. And just follow along on that edge and make sure that we have a nice clean selection. Looks like this is all going to work out just fine for us. Again, it's a you know, good separation between the foreground and background in here, which makes this really a very easy one for our selection. So there we go. Here's our last little bit. That looks fine. And back to the fish again. Okay, so we have our selection. We can zoom out. Hold the Alt key to zoom out just a little bit. There we go. Okay, one little spot down. There we want to take care of. We have this signature in here. So we need to add that to our selection. So back to the lasso tool. Remember, the selection is out here. So I want to add this part to the selection. If you just go just over the edge, so the window automatically scrolls. That just makes it a little bit easier here. And we'll auto scroll back to our beginning again. And add that in, so that will now be selected out. That's fine. That's the photographer for this course. That is in the materials. OK, that all looks good. Let's now come down and just click on the button right here. This is the layer mask, new layer mask. And that automatically gives us a layer mask cutting this, you know, showing this piece and not showing the bird because we were selecting that outside section. So we need to invert the layer mask. So up here to image adjustments, invert. There we go. That inverts that layer mask, and there's just the bird masked out. That looks good. Now I want to fill the rest of this area out here. Notice we have a lot of white outside. I need to fill that area so that's all black. If I grab the magic wand again, I can actually just select in that area. I clicked out here in the white area. And since we're on the mask, you can see there's the outline showing that we're on the mask. So clicking out there selects that area. Let's just go ahead and fill that with black. And come up here, get our paint bucket, make sure we're on black. Click into that area. That then fills it with black. That's good. Select and deselect. So we now have a nice clean selection around that. Okay, bird and the background. So far, so good. Now, let's come in and let's do a little move up, a little bit right up there. You can see I just made a little move and it's a little bit showing at the top up there. I'll do the same thing. I just put this back to the default colors and let's click into that area and that gets that bit and I'm on the wrong layer let's just undo that over here there we go let's try that again make sure that you're on the layer mask when you do this there we are and we'll fill that okay so now that is clean let's get to work now on the background the first thing I want is to darken down the the top of the background. There's was kind of sky. I want to bring that down. So we can see over in here. We've taken that down with this layer mask and using black to clear. And we're also using a blending mode of darker color on that and then an adjustment on the opacity to get the setting just right. So that's our first step. So let's make a... You can either do an adjustment layer on that one or just a straight layer. This is a straight layer. So, new layer, there we go. Let's grab our gradient tool. Check our gradient set. We want the foreground to transparent, which is that one. And then if you go outside of your image up here, hold the shift key down, which will give you a perfectly vertical line. We can then pull down the gradient top to bottom. And that gives us going the wrong direction. Let me see why. Okay, set on reverse. All right, let's just make sure that's not reversed. There we go. That's from a previous demonstration. Okay, hold the shift key down, pull it straight down. 
that darkens down that sky area as you can see. Let's now adjust that to darker color. There we go. And then bring the opacity down to a nice setting. That just allows us to knock down that sky area. So there it is without and there it is with and it just knocks down that sky. We now want to put in our kind of fantasy coloration in here and we'll be doing that with a layer mask in here. In this case not layer mask rather, but with a an adjustment layer doing a gradient. Click on that we're doing this black to a dark purple gradient which actually isn't even on here so we'll make that one from scratch that's fine. Okay, so let's do an adjustment layer. Come right down to this little button right there that brings up our adjustment layers. We'll do a gradient layer. You can also find this up under the layer and new fill layer right there. It'll be gradient layer. So you can choose the gradient that you want to use in this case. And I'm going to be choosing black to white like that. That's actually kind of backwards from what I want. So let's reverse that and we then can come in and fill this. If you want to, you can even give it a slight angle if you want to give it, make it a little more interesting. And then we want our purple coloration in here, so just click on the gradient itself, and this brings up the gradient editor. The top stops, these are your full color. So there's your full color black, your full color white. The bottom stops are your colors. So here's our black, and over here I want to have this one a purple. So I'll click on that, or double click rather, and let's go up into our purple range. And we'll find a nice purple coloration, something around here that's pretty good. So it's a black to purple gradient. You can control where the shift is by this little button there. This is the midpoint, so I can make the midpoint so we have more purple, less black, or more black, less purple. And you can come back and you can adjust this until it's exactly the effect that you want. Choose OK. There we are. So that gives us our purple coloration here, our black to purple coloration. And again you can position that wherever you want on this. Let's take a look at the original here. Now we were using a perfectly linear and straight up and down gradient black to purple. And then we are blending this in with everything underneath with our blending mode again right there. In this case we're using an overlay just overlaying our colors. So here we go. And again I'm, I might want to change the gradient once we do our overlay. We'll see how it looks. So blending and let's come down to overlay which is right down here. There's the overlay. I'm going to flip that over. Let's just give that a flip and this is a slight twist. That's pretty good. And that gives us that kind of spooky effect in here. Now if you don't want to have it that strong, you can adjust the opacity. If you bring the opacity down, that will bring down that effect. So you can come in here and actually adjust the amount of that effect that you want. You also can use different blending modes, of course. Let's just roll through these. I'll just use my wheel mouse and I'll roll down through these blending modes and you can see these different effects that you get. And some can be very very interesting. Like right here, here's a here's the overlay. Here's a soft light, little different look on that little more of the ground showing. So overlay it's spookier. Soft light little lighter. Here's a hard light, vivid light. And I'll just keep on going down here. So if you're doing these kinds of fantasy things, you know take a look at your different blending modes and just see what you get and see if there's anything which is interesting. Okay, let's go back up to the overlay again on this thing. This is that nice dark. Now I want to darken the background because we're going to be putting in those star-like effects. So you need to have that darkness so those really show up well. So far so good. Let's go back over here again. So we need to add a glow now around the bird giving it that kind of a fantasy look. That's pretty straightforward. That's right up here on our bird layer. 
here we go. I have them a little higher before, so I'll go ahead and move them a bit like that. Let's give this a blending mode. A little FX button at the bottom down here, or layer and layer style. Outer glow. There it is. Now the basics here is simply to adjust the size of the glow and the, the spread in there until you get just the effect that you want. You can do different blending modes on this as well. Notice we have blend, blending modes right here. If I take my wheel mouse, so I can actually roll this around and get different effects from this these blending modes. There's our normal. And I'll just kind of come down. I think that the lighter color might be kind of nice. There's lighten. That's pretty nice and soft effect. There's screen, so there's a lighten and screen. Not much of a difference, difference between lighten and screen. Hard light, soft light, linear light's not too bad. It's a lot brighter on linear light. So I think I'm going to use the the lighten effect, but I want to also color match this a bit better than this. So I'm going to click on the color right here and let's find something up in the same range as our background colors in here. It's in there someplace. And you can shift that around to adjust that that color, but I think something in there, kind of the, the pinkish color will look, look well because it, it blends and matches our other background colors. So there we have our glow happening. There it is. Now this is a softer glow on this one as you can see. So if you want to soften up that glow or adjust that edge again, go back to your effects and down to your outer glow layer and then you can come in here and adjust the amount you know, a little bit of spread if you want to. You can adjust the size a bit so it's a little bit larger like that. Bring the opacity down a touch and by just going back and forth among these different controls you can adjust that effect around the edge of the bird. They have just that just the amount of fantasy effect you want. I, I find in most fantasy pictures a little more is usually better than a little less. So being a little heavier handed is okay on these kinds of things. You also, if you wanted to, you can come down and actually change the shape of your contour for some interesting special effects kind of things in here. So there are all kinds of strange little possibilities that you can use. We'll stick with the default on that. Okay, so we've adjusted our glow. The last thing we need to do now are those star-like shapes in there. And that's pretty straightforward. We're going to be actually using a paintbrush and making some adjustments on that paintbrush and then putting a glow on that layer. So we're getting the star shape from the shape of a of a brush. Now you could also create this by making your own shape and then simply copying that several times and changing the size. It's a little more work but it can be done. So Let's give us a new layer. We want the layer above the background stuff and below the bird. So the new layer is going to be right in there. We want to have white as our color on this. We can, when we'll put our glow in, we can add some color into this with our glow color overlays, all kinds of fun stuff. We'll see some variations on that when we get to that point. Let's now take a look at our brushes. This is where things get interesting. Kind of a large brush there. I'm going to bring our brush size down a bit just something in here for right now. Now if we look at the brushes there's all kinds of brushes including specialty brushes. Now here's kind of a star like shape right there. Scroll down there are lots and lots of different specialty brushes that you can use in here and if you don't have all these I have a couple of things you know, added in. If you don't have all of these displayed you can find more of your brushes Just keep on rolling down. Interesting little one right there. There's some of our star-like things. But you can find more brushes. There's the one I want right there. Up here, 
little, little gear icon and down here lots of different brush styles down here. Now that one I believe is in the DP brushes section. This one has a, a solid fill, this one has no fill in the middle and just the streaks. So let's use that brush. Check our size. That's pretty small. Let me bring the size up so I can actually see this thing. We want it pretty big. Not that big. Try to find the midpoint size. Something like that. Now I could come in and paint a few at this size, change my size, paint a few more. And just see what happens if I just put in one of those. So you get that star like shape like that. Let's now make some adjustments on this to make this job a bit easier for us. So I don't have to go back in and just resize consistently. So let's go up here to the window and brush. This brings up the brush presets and in here we can adjust our brush settings. Click on shape dynamics and size jitter. Put that all the way to the top. What that does is it gives you different sizes as you're painting or even just clicking. It'll give you some randomness in there. You can adjust your minimum diameter here, smaller or larger. You can put an angular jitter. Notice how the angular jitter, if you watch the area down there, actually rotates. So the more angular jitter, the more rotation you're going to be getting. Now we don't need much because it's a star shape. You know, a little bit is going to give us that jitter effect anyway. You can adjust the roundness. Again, there's just some variation in here on that. So that adjusts our shape. And then if we do scattering, that adjusts the position as well. If I increase the scattering, notice how it changes the position. So if I was clicking in here someplace, it might come anywhere in that range around the spot that I'm clicking. It just put, puts in some randomness for us. So there we go. That's our, our brush settings. Now, when I click in here, you'll see that I'm getting different sizes and different rotations automatically. And it just saves me a lot of time. I don't have to go in and be adjusting the sizes and things. If I actually pull this across like that, you'll see how it comes in and paints in that randomness. Let's just undo that one stroke. You notice each time I, I click, it's putting in and giving me a different random shape. So it's not going to be exactly the same as last time because I'm not controlling it precisely. But the, again, the, the whole trick here is that randomness that we're getting on this. And then just paint in as many of these or as few of these as you want to give you that kind of star-like effect in there around the bird. I'm putting a few more in here just so you can see how this thing is working. Once we have that in there, we then can come in and do a layer style on this layer and put some glow around it to make those look a little more magical. I could have also done an additional setting. Let's just go back up here to Window and Brush. And you'll see we have Color Dynamics as well. So we can jitter between foreground and background colors. So if I chose two color values in here, let's say a, a light pink and a little bit darker purple, I could get some color jitter as well. Let me actually demonstrate it. I think that's a, a good variation on this. So I'm going to take out this one layer that we did. Let's just, I'll, I'll leave that there. Let's make a new layer. There we go. I'm going to call this one Stars 1. And let's call this one Stars 2. On this layer, let's add that additional effect. And that's the color dynamics. And I need to change my colors. So let's choose a foreground color of a real real light pink but having some pink in there. Let's change our background color to a deeper pink color. So foreground real pink, background darker and we have our color dynamics on that foreground background jitter. We can also have even more in here, you know, off, fade, pen pressure, p tilt, and so forth to control how that is applied. You can do a hue jitter, saturation jitter. So you have a lot of variations in here to come in and 
adjust those settings even more. Okay, now as I come in and click, you'll see how we're getting some color shift. You can see how this is this is white, that's darker right there. So now I have some color shift as well on these, making it look even more naturalistic. Let's just put a few more around here. I'll just a little bit like that. And again, the all these jitters that we put in there gives us that randomness that I want so it doesn't look like we're just coming in and you know painting something which is, is you know just repeating the same thing over and over again it looks much more natural this way alright now let's put our, our layer style here layer layer style we want outer glow there it goes a lot of glow on that as you can see we can adjust the size of the glow here and actually make those look a little more magical by adjusting that glow. You can adjust the, you know, the spread in there if you want to, but I think just a little bit of... Now what I want to have is to kind of soften them down a touch. So maybe right in here somewhere. Looks pretty good. And again, we can adjust our blending mode if you want to, to change that style as well. There's multiply color but I'm going to I'll use the the wheel on my mouse here to kind of scroll through these so linear dodge there's a, a color dodge overlay and you can pick the effect that you like to have just that that amount of magical look it'll depend upon your image what you know how much magic you want to have in there on these different overlays here Kind of like the soft light. It's just a little bit, not much, just a little bit of glow from the soft light. And there we go. So the stars, that's a real trick on this one. Again, that is using a special brush. You're know, finding the right brush shape and then working with these brush presets in here to control these dynamics. And that gives us that randomness that makes it much, much easier to create this kind of an effect. Now again, I could have done this whole thing by adjusting my colors each time, changing my size of the brush each time, and that kind of stuff. But it, it's much, much more work than just letting that be handled automatically by Photoshop. So there you go. That's how to create this kind of a magical look picture. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.